Every 22 minutes, a mysterious signal pierces the silence of the universe. Astronomers are baffled because they've been hearing this signal for an incredible 35 years, and until now, its true origin has been a mystery. This signal could be a completely new cosmic phenomenon, or it could be a message whose algorithm and true meaning we have not yet understood. Where does this mysterious signal really come from? Why is it so different from all other sounds and signals in space? And have scientists finally found a plausible solution? Signals in space are actually nothing unusual, but this signal, which we have been receiving with an astonishing regularity for 35 years, is unlike any other sound in the universe. While most cosmic signals tend to be random or short-lived, this signal has proven to be unusually stable and constant over a remarkably long period of time. Cosmic signals can originate from a whole range of astronomical phenomena, including stars, galaxies, quasars, and neutron stars. Pulsars are a class of particularly fast-rotating neutron stars that emit high-energy radiation. These beams travel through space like lighthouse signals and sound a bit like the regular ticking of a precise clockwork. Signals from quasars, or active galactic nuclei, are more like noise, sometimes have sharp peaks, or are sometimes elongated if they originate from slower, large-scale processes in the universe. The last phenomena in this series of already known and well-studied cosmic signals are the fast radio bursts, or FRBs for short. These short and extremely intense signals only last milliseconds. Their origin has not yet been fully clarified, but they probably also originate from massive radiation sources such as quasars or gamma-ray bursts. FRBs usually only sound once, or with a few repetitions, and sound like sudden bright screams in the cosmic silence, and then quickly fall silent again. The signal that has captured the attention of researchers for 35 years does not fit into any of these categories. Like the tireless cosmic metronome, it sends a mysterious signal every 22 minutes. Each signal consists of individual pulses lasting between 30 seconds and 5 minutes. These pulses always occur at intervals of exactly 21 minutes and 58 seconds and last around 6.5 minutes. Despite the variability of the individual pulses, this source shows astonishing stability due to the exact intervals between the individual signals and the continuity over 35 years. While the frequency would be consistent with a pulsar, the unusual length of the pulses between signals and the consistency of the pattern over decades contradict the behavior of a typical pulsar, whose signals usually occur at much shorter, more regular intervals and at a higher frequency. Is it a message we don't understand? Researchers were astonished when they heard this signal for the first time in 1988. It was clearly different from the usual chaotic noise of space and caused a minor sensation. When irregularities like this are noticed, scientists immediately look for all available explanations. But in the case of the signal, which has been given the name GPM J1839-10, they failed. The signal was unique. In 1988, the report of an unexplained signal from the depths of space caused a stir. Such discoveries always make us think of the eagerly awaited signals from other creatures. Many people who read the headline at the time hoped for the first evidence of extraterrestrials and possibly the beginning of friendly contact with other life forms in space. However, there was no confirmation of first contact with alien life forms, and scientists found it difficult to make sense of the signal. Radio signals normally sound like specific random or periodic patterns, and this was certainly true with this signal. But all the decoding methods known on Earth were unable to extract any deeper meaning from the signal. Of course, we can never rule out the possibility that other species use completely different frequencies and algorithms to send out communicative messages into space, and that we simply fail to decode such messages. It is also notable that our own messages, which we send into space via radio waves, have never been answered. Statistics have shown that there could be around 30 intelligent civilizations in the Milky Way alone. GPM J1839-10, who is sending the signal? Have you ever thought about who might respond if we send signals packaged as greetings 
randomly into the universe. The first signal of this kind was sent from the Arecibo Observatory in 1974. Later, the first attempts to make contact with extraterrestrials via radio signals developed into SETI, the Organization for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. This scientific organization has set itself a goal of using radio astronomy to search for signs of intelligent life outside the Earth. To this end, SETI scientists mainly listen to electromagnetic signals that may have been emitted by extraterrestrial civilizations. Since the 1960s, scientists have developed various methods and technologies to filter out potential messages or signals from extraterrestrial intelligence from the vast noise of the universe. Experts call such algorithms technosignatures, which usually differ significantly from natural signals due to repetition rates and a certain complexity of frequencies. Some critics believe that this search for extraterrestrial signals is comparable to looking for a needle in a haystack, given the vast size of the universe. If we consider the dimensions and the distances between the star systems and the many billions of stars in the Milky Way alone, it may indeed seem impossible to find open ears or receive other signals here. The fact that we are able to capture signals from cosmic events thousands of light years away gives us hope. But critics make another argument that we should at least consider carefully. We can never know who is receiving these messages we're blindly sending out. We can't possibly assume that all beings in the universe, if they exist, are friendly. That sounds scary, and yet it is true. Now we have to consider for a moment whether it is a pity that SETI has not yet found a single signal that was clearly technological in origin, or whether it is a blessing. In all that time, about five signals have been hot candidates for the first contact, at least for a while. GPM J1839-10 could be one of these exceptions, but in almost all cases, natural explanations for the signals have been found. Is a celestial body emitting the mysterious signals? While the mystery of the JPM J1839-10 signal remains unsolved, it has proven that most signals traveling over long distances in space are emitted by magnetars, pulsars, or neutron stars. When Australian researchers discovered a highly peculiar magnetar about 15,000 light years from Earth in 2022, they were initially baffled. This neutron star is already rotating very slowly which either indicates that it is very old or that it represents some other anomaly. Normally a magnetar rotates at rates of several spins per second, but this oddball had extended its rotation rate to an incredible 22 minutes. It is not yet known why a magnetar changes its behavior in this way. It may be a sign of age, but normally old magnetars with rotation rates that have slowed down so much no longer send out signals. Researchers know of a death line for the rotation rate, below which a neutron star loses its radiation and its ability to send shrill or pulsating signals into space. However, this neutron star rotates slowly and sends signals into space remarkably frequently. It was discovered by a team of scientists from Curtin University using the Murchison Widefield Array in Western Australia. Researchers normally locate objects like this by analyzing electromagnetic waves. Magnetars and pulsars can only be identified in the vastness of the universe by their radiation and acoustic signals, as they no longer emit light when they burn up. Radio astronomers specialize in objects like these. They study phenomena such as pulsars or fast radio bursts with large radio telescopes. Facilities like the Arecibo in Puerto Rico and the 500-meter Aperture Spherical Telescope in China use gigantic dishes to capture radio waves instead of optical signals. The FAST telescope, which is often jokingly referred to as China Sky Eye, has an impressive diameter of 500 meters and is the largest radio telescope that receives countless signals from space around the clock with a single dish. Today, radio astronomers no longer listen into space with their own ears. Most signals from space are not even audible to human ears. High-performance computers filter the signals, check certain audio tracks, compare them with known data, and report all signals that are conspicuous or cannot be assigned. This is how the Australian researchers noticed the signal 
that was repeated approximately every 22 minutes? Is it a magnetar that has been transmitting for 35 years? In their publication in the scientific journal Science, the researchers from Australia linked the supposedly newly discovered regular signal with a much older discovery. The article again reported on a mysterious signal that was first received in the late 1980s and never really decoded. The researchers are 100% sure that this signal and the magnetar they discovered are one and the same thing. The magnetar was located in the constellation Shield very close to the much better known constellation Sagittarius. In their study, the scientists compared the repetition rates of neutron stars which normally repeat within minutes or even seconds. The long intervals at which GPM J1839-10 emits signals are shown to be unusual. Only one other similar signal was noticed. Around a year and a half before the discovery of the magnetar in the constellation Shield, the same research team had already discovered a celestial body that emits signals every 18 minutes. The phenomenon could therefore occur more frequently than previously assumed. The radio signals in neutron stars result from the rotation of the celestial body and its magnetic field. Magnetars are special forms of neutron stars that are equipped with a particularly strong magnetic field. The field is about 2 quadrillion times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field and 20 trillion times stronger than the magnetic field that holds an ordinary paperclip. These magnetic monsters emit unimaginably large spectra of X-rays and gamma rays. Accompanying impressive stellar quakes on their surface, magnetars can develop forces comparable to the powerful primordial force that formed our planet in its infancy. Neutron stars are formed when a star explodes into a supernova at the end of its life. What remains is either a black hole or an ordinary neutron star or special forms of pulsars or magnetars. Normally, magnetars are only active for months or a few years, but the fact that such an object has been emitting audible signals at an active rotation rate for more than 35 years is highly unusual. Scientists now want to study the mysterious object in more detail and hope to gain even more fundamental insights into the nature of neutron stars. The object has been given the provisional classification of an ultra-long period magnetar until further classification of the phenomenon. Signal from 9 billion light years away. Astronomers around the world are listening into space with gigantic radio telescopes. Almost no sound escapes the researchers, or rather, nothing escapes the computers that monitor the telescope's observations. Of course, it is hardly possible for a human ear to distinguish and filter all the signals and noise from the cosmos. This is done by finely tuned programs. All received signals undergo intelligent filtering and analysis around the clock. Whether lightning, noise, beeps, or waves, the scientists' algorithms recognize all known frequencies, their modifications, deviations, and variations. Then, if a frequency or signal is recorded that the computers don't recognize, an alarm goes off immediately. Then, the data is reviewed by scientists. Worldwide, there are dozens of these alarms every month, but most of them are errors, signals from phenomena that are quite easy to explain after all, or signals from sources of interference on Earth or from satellites. Only about a dozen signals per year originate from previously unknown corners of the cosmos or from inexplicable events. International teams of scientists are dealing with these conspicuous radio signals. They try to interpret and decode the frequencies. Even more rare are signals that contain so-called Technosignatures. Technosignatures are frequencies and waves that are drawn in such a way that natural phenomena can be ruled out as sources. The most distant signal ever measured was recently received by two researchers from Canada and India. Astronomer Arnab Chakraborty of Canada's McGill University and his colleague Nirupam Roy of the Indian Institute of Science were able to capture a unique radio signal. The researchers achieved this with the help of the giant meter wave telescope in India. 
the world's largest radio telescope for wavelengths in the meter range, is located about 80 kilometers from the Indian city of Pune at an altitude of 588 meters. Initial analyses of the signal have already revealed that it originates from a galaxy at least 8.8 .8 billion light years away. This makes this signal absolutely unique so far. The discovery was only possible thanks to the gravitational lensing effect, which we also know from the observations of optical reflecting telescopes. The gravitational influence of large objects causes certain areas in the cosmos to become more prominent and older objects in the background to become visible, or, as in this case, audible. The signal some 9 billion light years away was bent by the presence of another massive galaxy between the target and the observer. This effectively magnified the signal by a factor of 30. So what works with light waves and optical impressions also works with radio waves. Canadian astronomer Chakraborty explained that until now, this type of radio signal could only be received from galaxies closer to Earth. If researchers can now use the gravitational lensing effect with radio waves as well, it means we'll soon be able to listen farther and deeper into space, and thus, into the past. Of course, radio waves also take a long time to reach us. Consequently, a signal that has traveled 8.8 .8 billion light years comes from a distant past. The galaxy SDSS J0826 plus 5630, from which the signal originates, already existed when the universe was still very young. Even if researchers consider it so far impossible that at this time already highly developed living beings existed in the universe, naturally the question arose whether the signal from galaxy SDSS J0826 plus 5630 is of natural origin or whether it concerns a techno-signature. The Search for Signals from Other Life Forms There are very few cosmic signals, apart from the background noise of the cosmos and signals originating from our immediate neighborhood, that travel long distances. Most sounds or radio waves get lost in the vastness of space or in the vacuum of interstellar space. If individual sounds or frequencies reach us, they usually emanate from very powerful sources, like pulsars or unique events such as supernova explosions. In 2019, Australian researchers caught a suspicious signal from our neighboring star, Proxima Centauri. The signal was received as part of the Breakthrough Listen Project. This project, funded by multi-billionaire Yuri Milner, is specifically looking for signals from the cosmos that could be from extraterrestrial intelligence. Before researchers can say with certainty whether or not a signal has a techno-signature, observations usually go through dozens of tests and filters to safely rule out sources of interference and errors. When the British newspaper The Guardian reported the signal in 2020, casting it as a possible sign from aliens, the discovery was not actually ready for publication. The hype surrounding the signal, which was named BLC-1 for Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1, continued for weeks. Leaders of the SETI research team, the largest international association for radio monitoring of the cosmos, took a stand and did not initially contradict the Guardian's speculation. Astronomer Andrew Simeon of the University of Berkeley reported that the signal was transmitted at 982 megahertz and stable on only one frequency. This almost certainly pointed to a non-natural signal. An exoplanet in the Proxima Centauri system, long thought to be Earth-like, was identified as the source. Another leading scientist in the SETI Association, Jason Wright of Penn State University in Pennsylvania, commented on the discovery saying, when you receive a signal like this, and it's not coming from the surface, you know you've detected extraterrestrial technology. However, the techno-signature had not been clearly confirmed at that time, and the euphoria was premature. Several checks of BLC-1 could not confirm the extraterrestrial techno-signature after all. Until today, neither the origin nor the nature of the frequency could be clarified unambiguously. NASA and scientific circles finally agreed that BLC-1 
was probably generated by a terrestrial source of interference. New Potential Alien Signals In February of this year, SETI researchers published in the renowned Nature magazine the finding of eight new potential alien signals. The recording of these signals was made some time ago, but only now were the researchers able to subject the signals and frequencies to improved analysis thanks to improved AI systems. All eight signals clearly showed techno signatures. The radio signals come from five stars located between 30 and 90 light years from Earth. Techno signature in this case means that the characteristics of the signals do not match either terrestrial or all known astronomical radio sources. The new two part K1 system should be able to safely prevent failures like BLC1. Improved detection systems and revised algorithms filter out interfering sources such as GPS satellites or mobile radio from the cosmic signal field more reliably than ever before and detect conspicuous features among the noise. The latest AI systems even proceed dynamically and teach themselves further improvements during observation. The eight suspicious signals were picked up by the Green Banks Radio Telescope in the United States. A team of researchers re-examined 150 terabytes of data from 820 nearby stars using two-stage K1 filtering. Before that, these radio data had already been analyzed by classical algorithms. However, these had found nothing. All eight signals have the small frequency width typical for techno signatures and a frequency drift. The signals were emitted only a few minutes each. The only thing that so far leaves doubt that these signals are really from extraterrestrial technology is the fact that they are single signals that have not been repeated so far. If the frequencies were coming from extraterrestrial radio, or if they were some kind of greeting message, the signals would certainly be repeated. Since the signals occurred only once, they cannot be analyzed further or traced back exactly to their origin. During an intensive follow-up observation of the five stars, the signals could not be picked up again. Thus, unfortunately, it remains unclear whether these frequencies really originated from extraterrestrial technology. The decoding of the signal of galaxy SDSS J0826 plus 5630. Of course, the oldest and farthest traveled radio signal has been thoroughly investigated in the meantime. It turned out that the signal from the approximately 9 billion year old galaxy SDSS J0826 plus 5630 is of natural origin. It was emitted by the hydrogen structure of the galaxy. Basically, all galaxies emit such signals. Nevertheless, scientifically, it is an absolute sensation that a signal of this age reaches us. It's fascinating what scientists and computer algorithms can glean from a single signal. Similar to how researchers use faint light signals billions of light years old to infer a galaxy's age, distance, luminosity, and mass, Radio astronomers can draw incredible details about a distant galaxy from a single signal. Among other things, the frequency from galaxy SDSS J0826 plus 5630 told researchers that the atomic mass of the galaxy's gas content is nearly twice the mass of the stars thought to be in the galaxy. This allows conclusions to be drawn about an extended hydrogen structure. Finally, whether this feature is typical of galaxies of this age can only be said with certainty once we have received and decoded signals from other comparably old galaxies. Certainly, researchers like the Canadian Arnab Chakraborty and his Indian colleague Nirupam Roy will continue to work on significantly improving radio telescopy using gravitational lensing effects. What happened to Voyager 1? According to NASA, the probe is sending a strange signal from interstellar space. Could this be the first indication of an encounter of the third kind, or are we just dealing with a technical fault? Never before has a probe been in interstellar space. Voyager 1 is the first man-made object to send data from there, and it's confusing. 
What if the interstellar medium is completely different from what scientists previously thought? Will we then have to rewrite the textbooks and prepare ourselves for further discoveries that challenge our imagination? Imagine how a brave probe has been traveling through space for more than 40 years and has now wandered far beyond the boundaries of our solar system. Then suddenly, the probe begins to send a mysterious and inexplicable sequence of signals to Earth. Voyager 1, the furthest man-made object from Earth, transmitted a strange sequence of ones and zeros to Earth almost half a century after its launch. What had happened? The binary code was designed in a pattern that made no recognizable sense to the scientists. All at once, the NASA scientists and engineers were faced with a puzzle. Had Voyager encountered something strange, or was the probe just broken? The second problem was how to diagnose and fix a problem when the device was 24 billion kilometers away in interstellar space. The situation surrounding Voyager 1 presented NASA with a lot of challenges. When the NASA control team first learned of the unusual signals from the Voyager 1 probe, the feverish search for solutions began. They began to analyze the structure of the mysterious messages, hoping to discover in the pattern a clue to the underlying disturbance. The problem appeared complex, so the NASA team turned to artificial intelligence to help them sift through the data patterns using a specialized algorithm. The AI became a crucial tool in deciphering the signals. After days of intensive data analysis, a recurring pattern was recognized, and this was the first indication of a malfunction in the probe's communication hardware. The team developed a hypothesis that a defect in the telemetry modulation unit, the device responsible for converting and sending data from the probe to Earth, could be the cause of the distorted signals. The next challenge was to find a solution to fix this defect remotely. To understand the technical details, engineers dug out ancient blueprints from the archives. Some of the data had long since disappeared or been destroyed, so even former NASA engineers who had long since retired were called back in to solve Voyager's problem. After several simulations and tests, the team decided on a bold approach. They tried to instruct the probe to switch to a previously unused communication system that had long ago been programmed as a backup for just such emergencies. This operation was dangerous because this measure could have meant the end of communication with Voyager. Then a mission of a century would have ended sooner than anyone had hoped. Holding their breath, the team sent the order to switch over the communication systems, and then the long wait began. Due to the enormous distances involved, a signal now takes over 17 hours to reach the probe and another 17 hours to return. We can all well imagine the tension in NASA's control room and the joy when Voyager 1 responded. It was a moment of collective relief and joy that will go down in NASA history forever. The spacecraft had successfully received and implemented the command, and the data began to flow again in an intelligible format. The mission could continue. Further into space than ever before. It's magical. The solution to the problem will give us years more of data from a space that has not yet been explored. Voyager offers us the unique opportunity to receive measurement data from the infinite space between the stars and planetary systems for the first time. The Voyager mission is truly one of the boldest space exploration missions we humans have ever launched. The primary scientific objectives of the Voyager mission in the near future include the ongoing study of interstellar space. Voyager 1 and its sister ship Voyager 2 are the only man-made objects that have ever ventured into this unexplored realm. The further away the probes are from Earth, the more exciting but also the more difficult the mission becomes. It is already a miracle that we can maintain contact with technical devices that are so far away. The second critical point is the energy supply. The plutonium-based radioisotope generators on board the probes produce less and less energy over time. The mission teams have already switched off most of the instruments in order to reserve the remaining energy for the most important scientific missions. NASA is currently hoping that both Voyager probes will continue to transmit data until the end of the decade and possibly beyond. But even when the radio link has long since been lost, the mission will not end. The Voyager twins will then become ambassadors for our civilization and culture. Each probe is equipped with an extremely long-lasting golden record on board, which contains sounds, images, and messages from Earth. In many thousands of years, the probes may be captured by the gravitational pull of a star and then appear on the radar screens of another civilization. Voyager. Fast. 
cheap, reliable. It's hard to believe, but these two veterans of space exploration were put together in a few months on a mini-budget to take advantage of a special window in the constellation of the outer planets. Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune had not been so favorably aligned for 170 years, and it was known in the 70s that it would take another 170 years for the four outer planets to come together again. So they took action and built the two Voyager probes in a rush. Both were to take slightly different courses, and if one was lost, the other would still have been there. In the end, both reached their destination. 1977 was the beginning of an epic journey. To increase their speed, both probes flew several maneuvers around planets. Voyager 2, launched on August 20, 1977, reached Jupiter on July 9, 1979. Voyager 1, which followed on September 5 of the same year, reached Jupiter in March 1979 and provided the first breathtaking images and valuable data about the giant planet and its moons. One of the most remarkable results was the discovery of volcanic activity on the moon Io. At the time, this was the first observation of volcanism outside the Earth. After the successful flyby of Jupiter, Voyager 1 continued its journey and reached Saturn in November 1980 revealing the complex structure and beauty of Saturn's rings and providing fascinating insights into the planet's atmosphere and moons, as well as the first detailed look at Titan, Saturn's largest moon. Voyager 2 investigated the aspects around Jupiter that Voyager 1 had missed. Together, the two provided a perfect picture of the gas giant and so many images that scientists still rave about today. Voyager 2 visited Saturn and continued its unique journey to Uranus and Neptune. During its flyby of Uranus in January 1986, Voyager 2 discovered 10 new moons and two new rings around the ice giant. The journey culminated in August 1989, when Voyager 2 became the first probe to fly past Neptune and send us the very first image of the planet. Voyager 2 discovered Neptune's great dark spot, many clues to the most violent storms in the solar system, and previously unknown moons. After providing invaluable insights into the outer planets, the Voyager probes continued their journey beyond the confines of the known solar system. Their mission was extended to an interstellar mission, and NASA was amazed at the tenacity and reliability these two simple probes had shown up to that point. No one had initially hoped that the two would eventually reach the boundaries of the solar system, but they did, and researchers are very grateful for these moving moments. The first time in the heliosphere. It was a cause for celebration, Voyager 1 reached the heliosphere in August 2012. The enormous bubble in interstellar space created by the solar wind, the stream of charged particles emitted by the sun, envelops our solar system and protects it from cosmic radiation. The boundary of the heliosphere, where the solar wind meets the interstellar medium and loses velocity, is called the heliopause. Beyond this boundary, the influence of interstellar space begins. Compared to the incredible vastness of the universe, the heliosphere is only a tiny dot. However, it extends far beyond the outermost planets of our solar system. Voyager 1 was the first probe to cross the heliopause and entered interstellar space in 2012, about 121 astronomical units away from the Sun, the equivalent of around 18 billion kilometers. Although this is an enormous distance from our point of view, it's small compared to the size of our galaxy. The Milky Way has a diameter of around 100,000 light years, which corresponds to 6,324,107,700 astronomical units. And our Milky Way is only an average sized galaxy in a universe that is home to billions of galaxies. So the threshold of the heliosphere is really only a pebble's throw in cosmic terms. But for our science, it was a huge breakthrough that revealed some surprises. Expected results were the decreases in the solar wind and the increase in cosmic rays from outside our solar system. Unexpected, however, was the discovery that the magnetic field outside the heliosphere was stronger and oriented differently than predicted. Voyager 1 encountered a magnetic field that is more than 10 times stronger than the magnetic field inside the heliosphere. This discovery confronts us with completely new questions about the structure of the interstellar space and the interaction between the solar wind and the interstellar medium. Another unexpected result was the discovery of a magnetic highway at the boundary of the heliosphere. In this region, charged particles flow back and forth between the heliosphere and interstellar space, indicating a more complex structure of the heliosphere than previously thought. 
a surprising stream of particles that appeared after crossing the threshold to interstellar space added further mystery. In 2012, the time had come. More than 30 years after its launch, Voyager 1 became the first to cross a magical threshold. The space where our sun's sphere of influence ends and the mysterious interstellar medium begins. The infinite darkness of space, the emptiness and silence that makes up 95% of the known cosmos, was touched for the first time by a human spacecraft. Who would have thought that Voyager 1 and 2 would experience this historic moment? What is beyond the heliosphere? Were you aware that the space around Earth and all our neighboring planets is something very different from the gigantic empty space between stars? We always say a rocket flies into space, or we think outside the Earth's orbit begins the same space we see when Hubble and James Webb show pictures of the deep and dark black cosmos. But this is not true. All space from the Sun so far beyond the Kuiper Belt is affected by solar radiation and the magnetic forces of our star. Only many billions of kilometers away from the Sun, the real space, the void, the interstellar medium, begins. When exactly Voyager will finally reach this space was unclear for a long time. Researchers had expectations, but no facts, until Voyager provided them. It was suspected that the particle density would decrease sharply at some point. Where previously there were about 100 particles per cubic centimeter, there would then only be a few. At first, the measurement data of the probe surprised, since they indicated an increased magnetic force, which apparently still came far outside from the Sun and increased shortly before the crossing. Researchers concluded that there is a kind of stagnation of the solar force where it meets the interstellar medium. If both currents collide, the solar radiation forms something like a thick buffer. The researchers had not expected this. In 2015, the measurement data changed so significantly that interstellar space became more tangible. Everything went reasonably as predicted. Voyager 1 continued to function normally until mission scientists recently noticed that the probe suddenly seemed to have confused them about its position in space. NASA initially reassured that such an incident was to be expected at this stage of the Voyager mission. Suzanne Doad, project manager for Voyager 1 and its twin sister Voyager 2 at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, said the problem was most likely with the spacecraft's Altitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, Antenna Alignment Mechanism. But the AACS appears to be functional, as the spacecraft was receiving commands and sending science data back to Earth with the same signal strength as before. However, the telemetry data from the AACS was unassignable, even though the antenna had been properly pointed at all times. Otherwise, not a single signal would have reached us. According to NASA, staff took care to investigate the problem and fix it. But by then, some scientists had already begun to prick up their ears. They stumbled over the fact that Voyager 1 continued to send this supposedly meaningless data safely to Earth, and no alarm had triggered in the process, nor did the probe switch to safety mode. This may mean that the data was correct and that NASA simply could not interpret it correctly. Possibly, Voyager 1 encountered a structure in the interstellar space within which the normal data to space and time were no longer correct. On Earth, it looked as if the probe had not detected its position correctly, but in reality, we could be on the track of something unusual. An alien force or an alien signal? A short time after the strange confusion about its position in space, Voyager 1 caught something else that worried scientists. The particle detector showed a faint plasma current where there should be nothing. Like a line, the current stretched through the supposed void and scientists were once again worried. Explanations were quickly found and officially, it was said that a small amount of superthermal electrons, which are generally present in plasmas, had produced a small plasma frequency peak on one of Voyager's short antennas. Most likely, it had been a small number of fast electrons. But again, other scientists did not agree. For them, all these strange measurement data speak one language, pointing to something mysterious. Plasma waves there where actually nothing should be, a loss of the space orientation, although Voyager actually functioned completely normally. All this speaks also for the fact that in the interstellar medium, a force prevails, which we do not know of so far. So researchers even dared to claim that this could be a new force of nature. 
They warn their colleagues not to take these measurement data lightly and to always want to explain everything immediately with what is known. If we really want to investigate the space between the stars, we must also be able to face new and previously unknown things. But neither NASA nor more conservative scientific circles want to know anything about this. Imagine you come to a new country. Before you have imagined how it would be there, perhaps you read a picture book or travel guide. Then many things are completely different there, and instead of surrendering to this adventure, you leaf through your books and compare the real events with your expectations. This is exactly what most researchers are doing right now with the exciting new discoveries of Voyager 1, and we may be missing out on important discoveries this way. Is NASA making a mistake? Instead of acting on new ideas, NASA released a new report on the fate of Voyager 1. Officials describe in detail how a dedicated team spent days digging through the probe's blueprints. Engineers had to sift through decades-old manuals to find a solution to the alleged problem. Some data was probably even taken home by long-retired engineers. Since both probes were only supposed to fly for five years, no one had thought that the data would become important again 40 years later. According to NASA, the Voyager team not only figured out the problem, but solved it. The statement goes on to say, that we received tangled data before the spacecraft's Altitude Articulation and Control System, AACS, sent back information via an onboard computer that has been out of service for years. The data was deemed corrupted before it was even transmitted by the computer. Susan Dode's team instructed the AACS to resend its data through the spacecraft's working computer. After that, everything was back to normal. How long? will we be able to accompany Voyager 1 and 2? The power generated by the two spacecraft is steadily declining, and mission team members have been turning off some components for years to conserve power. They hope the probes will remain in service until at least 2025. Voyager 1 is currently about 23.3 billion kilometers from Earth, or 156 times the Sun-Earth distance. The probes are tracked using NASA's Deep Space Network, which sends only 160 bits per second of data back to Earth. A typical home broadband connection is measured in megabytes per second, or millions of bits per second. Still, these transmission rates are enough to capture the measured data of the properties of the interstellar medium. After all, there must not be much there. Although Voyager 1 has soon flown 10 years beyond the heliosphere, it has not yet completely left the solar system. Far out in space is another mystery of the nearby cosmos, the Oort Cloud. This spherical disk of comets and asteroids is more than 2,000 Sun-Earth distances from the Sun. Although it lies far away from the actual plasma sphere of the Sun, the Oort Cloud still belongs to our solar system. It's bound to our Sun by a mechanism that is not yet fully understood. It's probably the dent in gravity left by the solar system in space-time that binds this collection of asteroids and comets to us. Just imagine, Voyager 1 will need another 300 years or so to fly to this cloud. Only too gladly the scientists would have today already data of this distant place. But they cannot wait 300 years, nor will the power supply of the probes last long enough to send data to Earth. But who knows, maybe by then humans will have spacecraft that can catch up with Voyager and jet off to the Oort cloud to take measurements on the spot. Exploring Tau Buotis In the recent past, an announcement from the world of astronomy made big headlines among the ranks of experts. Researchers reported that they may have been receiving radio emissions from a distant planet that is making its orbits around a fixed star outside our home solar system. Over the course of their work, the scientists made use of a state-of-the-art radio telescope located in the Netherlands. The object of the scientific probe were three different stars, which experts already suspected in advance served as central fixed points for some exoplanets. It didn't take long before one of the three star systems aroused the special interest of experts. That system, christened Tau Buotis, left no doubt that it does indeed contain a planet. Scientists consider it very probable that the radio signals they registered in the context of their research originated from exactly that far distant planet. This has been the background that actual measured values correlate very strongly with the theoretical predictions the experts worked out beforehand. American Jake Turner, 
in his position as a renowned astronomer at Cornell University, limited the growing euphoria about the sensational discovery in the same breath he revealed it. The expert involved in the research stated that scientists currently cannot say with 100% accuracy whether the received signals are actually emitted by the planet of the observed star system. According to him, it is therefore essential that the star system and the celestial body named Tau Buotis B be studied in more detail. Preparations for the Research Project To prepare for the investigation of the star system, which is about 51 light years away from our blue home planet, astronomers used an ingenious trick. They first examined the radio emissions of the planet Jupiter, and then the measurement results and values obtained were modified in such a way that they could be transferred to a distant exoplanet with a remote fixed star. Those transferable results were then compared with the values obtained by experts during the investigation of Tau Buotis B. The received radio emissions of this celestial body could not be the only provable radio signals of an exoplanet in the history of astronomical research. Accordingly, experts consider it possible that they could have received signals from the star Upsilon Andromedae or its planet. However, since the corresponding readings were even weaker and more vague than in the case of Tau Buotis B, scientists are still exercising cautious restraint for the time being before the phenomenon is examined in more detail. Why the study of radio waves is so important. At this point, the question could arise why the investigation of radio waves of strange planets enjoys such an unusual esteem in the world of astronomical research. This is because measured values of such a kind can help scientists to draw a more precise picture of the structural condition of exoplanets and their direct environment. For example, the study of radio waves plays a role that should not be underestimated in deciphering the corresponding magnetic fields of celestial bodies. The intensity of the magnetic fields in turn has a direct influence on the prevailing conditions on the planets themselves. As a reminder, the magnetic field of our Earth serves to protect our atmosphere, without which, as we know, life could not have formed on our home planet. However, for modern science, the direct study of magnetic fields of distant celestial bodies is still quite complicated. For this reason, the particular focus of researchers is on studying radio emissions, which, as briefly mentioned above, will allow them to build a scientific bridge to the nature and intensity of magnetic fields. It'll probably be some time before experts can say with certainty where the radio signals actually come from. However, if the theory that the collected data actually originate from Tau Buotis B proves to be true, this would be tantamount to an astronomical Big Bang. Never before have scientists succeeded in recording radio emissions from exoplanets. We're curious to see what the results of the continuous investigations will bring in the future. While we've now dealt with which signals of foreign planets we could possibly collect on Earth, we would like to turn the galactic tables at this point. We will now look at the efforts representatives of mankind have already made in order to make potential life forms in the infinite expanses of the universe aware of the existence of our species. The Arecibo Message It is November 16, 1974, when a few scientists under the care of astrophysicist Frank Drake launch what is still a unique endeavor to this day as part of the so-called Arecibo message, named after the location of its starting point, the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico, experts took the potentially foolhardy step of transmitting a terrestrial message to possible alien life forms in the universe. Using radio waves, experts wanted to give the aliens some information about humanity's way of life and background, as well as about the Earth itself. The globular cluster M13 which is located in the constellation Hercules, and thus about 25,000 light years away from our blue home planet, was chosen as the target point of this extraordinary undertaking. Since there are more than 300,000 individual stars within this gigantic globular cluster, the experts of the time hoped to find an inhabited celestial body in the midst of such a densely populated space. 
At its core, the Arecibo message contained various binary codes and consisted of a total of 1,679 bits. However, this method of transmission required the potential recipient to have a sound knowledge of mathematics. Thus, the aliens would not have been able to comprehend the message sent by Earth at first glance, but would have had to first break down the received code into its prime factors and then rearrange it in image form. But what information about humanity, our state of knowledge, and about our planet itself did the experts choose? The Content of the Arecibo Message The first paragraph of the Arecibo Message dealt with the numbers from 1 to 10, common knowledge for us. With the help of differently colored squares, the aliens were thus to be taught the basic rules of the simplest numeric sequences. The next section of this unique message dealt with chemical elements. Thus, the contained number sequence 167815 stood for the chemical materials hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, as well as phosphorus. The background here was that the aforementioned elements represent enormously important components of our planetary biochemistry and also describe those materials that form human DNA. While the following paragraph dealt with nucleotides, or in other words, the detailed building blocks of our DNA, the fourth paragraph dealt with the structure of our genetic material. The first paragraphs of the Arecibo message thus provided a quite comprehensive first impression of the biochemical nature of our species, and the following passage made a bow to human anatomy. Here, the average shape of an adult person was conveyed in the rough sketches. In addition, the corresponding section contained information about the total number of the world's population. Afterwards, the aliens could look at a diagram of our solar system, on which the individual planets as well as the Sun in their approximate size relations and distances were represented. Last but not least, researchers decided to reveal some information about the Arecibo Observatory and its technical equipment. Responses and Criticism Although astronomers placed great hopes in their extraordinary undertaking, we have yet to receive an answer to our terrestrial message to this day. If one follows the statements of some experts, the efforts of scientists were doomed to failure from the beginning anyway, even if the message had been received by extraterrestrial life forms. On the one hand, there was criticism about the comprehensibility of the Arecibo message. It might simply have been too difficult for extraterrestrials to decode such a message of mathematical procedures. In addition, the Arecibo message would have had to have been received in its entirety. If some bits of our terrestrial message were lost along the journey, the human call to the universe would not have been comprehensible. Fast Radio Bursts Mysterious Radio Bursts from Alien Galaxies when a team of scientists was busy in 2006 reanalyzing some sky surveys conducted by the Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia, they couldn't believe their eyes. Although the data had been available to the experts for five years, it was only now that they realized that the results showed an unusual detail. Rapid radio flashes that appeared at lightning speed and disappeared just as quickly. Similarly, fast signals had already been recorded in the study of pulsars. In contrast to the pulses emitted by the rapidly rotating neutron star, however, the ominous radio flashes do not usually occur repeatedly, but in most cases only once. The short burst of radio radiation lasts only a few milliseconds. Within this short eruption period, the radio flashes often reach intensities of up to 30 Jansky. This is a unit of measurement that indicates the strength of radio source flux densities. Considering that the fast radio bursts occur for only a few fractions of a second, they reach a remarkable concentration. Vague conjectures posited that the astonishing radio bursts might occur approximately every 10 seconds. However, this assumption still lacks solid evidence. What is certain is that the experts were able to investigate about 25 fast radio bursts in more detail by 2017. By means of dispersion, or in other words, the direct dependence of a physical quantity on the frequency of a certain wave, the experts succeeded in deducing the approximate distance of the radio bursts. 
This natural physical fact is used to determine how much the corresponding radio signal is slowed down by the free electrons in space. The scientist's groundbreaking finding was that ultimately only 6% at most of the measured dispersion could be caused by the material composition of our home galaxy, the Milky Way. From this, the renowned experts concluded that the observed fast radio bursts must be up to 3.3 gigaparsecs away from us. A gigaparsec corresponds to a distance of approximately 3.26 billion light years, whereby a light year can be equated with a value of approximately 6 trillion miles. In other words, this means nothing else than that the fast radio flashes have an extra galactic origin and do not originate in our home Milky Way. Theories and Attempted Explanations So while experts have been able to determine the approximate distance of the fast radio bursts, finding the origins of the short bursts of radio signals will be a much more difficult undertaking. After the existence of the radio bursts became known, the most diverse scientific theories arose, trying to decipher the backgrounds of these exciting phenomena. The thesis arose that the radio flashes might result from the fusion of two white dwarfs, extremely compact old stars. The thereby newly formed white dwarf could form a powerful magnetic pole, ultimately responsible for the unusual radio flashes. If one follows this thesis, then anywhere where fast radio bursts are located, a supernova should be detectable. In addition, some experts suggested that the fast radio bursts could be short bursts on a so-called flare star. These stars, as their name suggests, are characterized by the occurrence of flares, or in other words, short eruptions of enormous amounts of energy. The detected dispersion is therefore not due to a gigantic spatial distance, but rather caused by the plasma envelope of the flare star. Since the corresponding outbursts typically originate in the chromosphere, a lower atmospheric layer, the radio radiation could be diffracted on its way into the infinite expanse of space and finally appear in the form of short-lived radio flashes. Another hypothesis suggests that the roots of these phenomena, despite the observed dispersion, are in fact within the Milky Way. According to this theory, the dispersion could be due to the influence of gases, which are produced, for example, during the evaporation of black holes. Probably the most exciting theory advanced for fast radio bursts looks for their origins outside of naturally occurring galactic interactions. It's theoretically conceivable that the measured signals are in reality the remnants of extraterrestrial radio signals. While all these attempts at explanations still have their raison d'etre, some scientists succeeded in the past year in reaching a milestone in the search for the origin of the fast radio bursts. According to them, it's not white dwarfs, flare stars, gases, or extraterrestrial technologies that cause the fast radio bursts, but magnetars. The Scientific Breakthrough Although hundreds of fast radio bursts have been discovered in recent years, scientists have only been able to trace a vanishingly small fraction of those phenomena back to their home galaxies. This is mainly due to the natural fact that radio bursts are known to last only a few milliseconds at a time. Thanks to the information provided by the Hubble Space Telescope, experts were recently able to add five more fast radio bursts to this manageable list of traced radio flashes. With the help of high-resolution images of the corresponding galaxies of origin, Scientists were even able to determine the approximate position of the radio signals in space. The exciting finding was that the measured radio flashes most likely originate near the spiral arms of galaxies. The corresponding regions are also known to harbor so-called magnetars. These are neutron stars that possess incomparably strong magnetic fields. These celestial bodies are thought to form when a star with an intrinsic mass of 1.4 to three solar masses, goes supernova. While most of the detected radio bursts are one-time phenomena, there exists another, much rarer class in the field of fast radio bursts called repeaters. The fact that the corresponding bursts occurred at recurring intervals suggested that their origin must be a permanent process. For this reason, scientists have been observing compact objects such as black holes and neutron stars for some time, since they are suspected of being able to produce radio flashes. And as we now know, the hopes placed in these investigations were not unfounded.
while the exploration of the extragalactic spiral arms already suggested that the flare-up of magnetars is accompanied by the generation of radio bursts, a scientific report appeared in the summer of 2020 which proved this phenomenon even in our home galaxy. Astronomers observed a magnetar in the Milky Way emitting a fast radio burst. This galactic event was again accompanied by bursts of high-energy gamma radiation. The fact that not all of the measured gamma ray bursts were accompanied by fast radio bursts, however, again created more questions. Nevertheless, the experts now have a promising clue that needs to be explored in greater detail in the course of future investigations. Now that mankind has come closer to the answer of where the radio bursts are generated, the question of how exactly the fast radio bursts are generated still remains an unsolved mystery. Fascinating Magnetars Indeed, the exact nature of magnetars also still raises some questions. What we do know is that these celestial bodies represent the collapsed core of a massive star. The density of magnetars is so immense that the celestial bodies have about the mass of our Sun, but at the same time, a radius of only about 6 miles. And the background of the enormous magnetic fields of magnetars has not yet been deciphered. On the one hand, it's conceivable that the fields are a remnant of the collapsed star, or that they are generated by a superconducting, in other words, practically resistance-free material that is possibly hidden in the interior of magnetars. No matter how the imposing magnetic fields are generated, the structures are about one trillion times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. This force is even sufficient to distort the electron orbitals, or in other words, the spatial wave functions of atoms. At the same time, the powerful magnetic fields are able to accelerate particles and thus cause high-energy events. The corresponding phenomena can also be created, however, by magnetic disturbances which originate from material displacements in the inside of the magnetar. These interactions are eventually reflected in the production of X-rays and gamma rays. For scientists, it's certain that the gamma rays must be in close connection with the formation of fast radio bursts. However, future research projects will investigate why the experts have not yet been able to identify a recurring pattern and why the gamma ray bursts occur without the accompaniment of radio flashes. What do you think about the exciting fast radio bursts? We're already looking forward to reading your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback in the comments. Now click on one of the images in the credits to get to more fascinating videos. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.